82. At that time again, Mahamadi the Bodhisattva Mahasattva made a request of the Blessed One, saying, Blessed One, tell me. Shugita, tell me about the rising and disappearing of the Skandhas, Didas, and Ayatanas. In case there is no ego soul, what is it that comes to exist and to disappear? The ignorant who are attached to the notion of rising and disappearing, fail to understand the extinction of pain, and thus they know not what nirvana is. Said the Blessed One. Then, Mahamati, listen well and reflect well within yourself. I will tell you. Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva said. Certainly, Blessed One. And gave ear to the Blessed One. The Blessed One said this to him. Mahamati, the Tathagatagarbha holds within it the cause for both good and evil, and by it all the forms of existence are produced. Like an actor it takes on a variety of forms, and in itself is devoid of an ego soul and what belongs to it. As this is not understood, there is the functioning together of the triple combination from which effects take place. But the philosophers not knowing this are tenaciously attached to the idea of a cause or a creating agency. Because of the influence of habit energy that has been accumulating variously by false reasoning since beginningless time. What here goes under the name of Alayavihnana is accompanied by the seven Vijnanas which give birth to a state known as the abode of ignorance. It is like a great ocean in which the waves roll on permanently but the deeps remain unmoved. That is, the Alaya body itself subsists. Uninterruptedly, quite free from fault of impermanence, unconcerned with the doctrine of ego substance, and thoroughly pure in its essential nature. As to the other seven Vijnanas beginning with the Manas and Manovijnana, they have their rise and complete ending from moment to moment. They are born with false discrimination as cause, and with forms and appearances and objectivity as conditions which are intimately linked together. Adhering to names and forms, they do not realize that objective individual forms are no one more than what is seen of the mind itself. They do not give exact information regarding pleasure and pain. They are not the cause of emancipation. By setting up names and forms which originate from greed, greed is begotten in turn, thus mutually conditioned and conditioning. When the sense organs which seize upon the objective world are destroyed and annihilated, the other things immediately cease to function, and there is no recognition of pleasure and pain which are the self-discrimination of knowledge. Thus there is the attainment of perfect tranquilization in which thoughts and sensations are quieted. Or there is the realization of the four dhyanas, in which truths of emancipation are well understood. Whereupon the yogins are led to cherish herein the notion of true emancipation, because of the not rising of the vijnanas. But when a revulsion or turning back has not taken place in the Alayavihnana known under the name of Tathagatagarbha, there is no cessation of the seven evolving Vijnanas. Why? Because the evolution of the Vijnanas is depending on this cause. But this does not belong to the realm of the Sravakas, Pratyekabuddhas, and those who are disciplining themselves in the exercises of the philosophers. As they only know the egolessness of the self-soul, as they only accept the individuality and generality of the skandhas, didas, and ayatanas, there is the evolving of the Tathagatagarbha. When an insight into the five dharmas, the three svabhavas, and the egolessness of all things is obtained, the Tathagatagarbha becomes quiescent. By causing a revulsion in the continuous development of the graded stages, the bodhisattva may not be led astray in the path of enlightenment by those philosophers who hold different views. Thus establishing himself at the bodhisattva stage of Akala, he obtains the paths leading to the happiness of the ten samadhis. Supported by the Buddhas in samadhi. Observing the truths of the Buddha which go beyond thought and his own original vows. Not entering into the happiness of the samadhi which is the limit of reality. But by means of the self-realization which is not generally gained by the paths of discipline belonging to the sravakas. Pratyekabuddhas and philosophers. He obtains the ten paths of discipline which belong to the noble family of the Tathagatas. And also obtains the knowledge body created by the will which is removed from the premeditated workings of Samadhi. For this reason, Mahamati, 
let those bodhisattva mahasattvas who are seeking after the exalted truth effect the purification of the Tathagatagarbha which is known as Alayabhinana. Mahamati. If you say that there is no Tathagatagarbha known as Alayabhinana, there will be neither the rising nor the disappearing of an external world of multiplicities in the absence of the Tathagatagarbha known as Alayabhinana. But, Mahamati, there is the rising and disappearing of the ignorant as well as the holy ones. Therefore, the yogins, while walking in the noble path of self-realization and abiding in the enjoyment of things as they are, do not abandon working hard and are never frustrated in their undertakings. Mahamati, this realm of the Tathagatagarbha is primarily undefiled and is beyond all the speculative theories of the Sravakas, Pratyekabuddhas, and philosophers. But it appears to them devoid of purity, as it is soiled by these external defilements. This is not the case with the Tathagatas, Mahamati. With the Tathagatas it is an intuitive experience as if it were an Amulika fruit held in the palm of the hand. This Mahamati, was told by me in the canonical text relating to Queen Srimala, and in another where the Bodhisattvas, endowed with subtle, fine, pure knowledge, are supported by my spiritual powers. That the Tathagatagarbha known as Alayabhunana evolves together with the seven Vijnanas. This is meant for the Sravakas who are not free from attachment, to make them see into the egolessness of things. And for Queen Srimala to whom the Buddha's spiritual power was added, the pure realm of Tathagatahud was expounded. This does not belong to the realm of speculation as it is carried on by the Sravakas, Pratyekabuddhas, and other philosophers. Except, Mahamati, that this realm of Tathagatahud which is the realm of the Tathagatagarbha Alayavihnana is meant for those Bodhisattva Mahasattvas who like you are endowed with subtle, fine, penetrating thought power and whose understanding is in accordance with the meaning. And it is not for others, such as philosophers, Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas, who are attached to the letters of the canonical texts. For this reason, Mahamati, let you and other Bodhisattva Mahasattvas discipline yourselves in the realm of Tathagatahud. In the understanding of this Tathagatagarbha Alayavihnana, so that you may not rest contented with mere learning. So it is said. 1. The Garbha of the Tathagatas is indeed united with the seven Vijnanas. When this is adhered to, there arises duality, but when rightly understood, duality ceases. 2. The mind, which is the product of intellection since beginningless time, is seen like a mere image. When things are viewed as they are in themselves, there is neither objectivity nor its appearance. 3. As the ignorant grasp the fingertip and not the moon, so those who cling to the letter, know not my truth. 4. The Siddha dances like a dancer. The Manas resembles a jester. The Mano Vijnana together with the five Vijnanas creates an objective world which is like a stage point one. 83. At that time, Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva made a request of the Blessed One, saying, Pray tell me, Blessed One. Pray tell me, Shugita, concerning the distinguishing aspects of the five Dharmas, the three Svabhavas, the eight Vijnanas, and the twofold egolessness. By recognizing the distinguishing aspects of the twofold egolessness, I and other Bodhisattva Mahasattvas will be able to establish those truths while affecting a continuous development through the various stages of Bodhisattvahood. It is said that by these truths we can enter into all the Buddha truths, and that by entering into all the Buddha truths we can enter even into the ground of the Tathagata's inner realization. Said the Blessed One. Then, Mahamati, listen well and reflect well within yourself. I will tell you. Certainly, Blessed One, said Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva and gave ear to the Blessed One. The Blessed One said this to him. Mahamati, I will tell you about the distinguishing aspects of the five dharmas, the three svabhavas, the eight vijnanas, and the twofold egolessness. The five dharmas are Name, form, discrimination, right knowledge, and suchness. When these are thoroughly comprehended by the yogins, 
they enter into the course of the Tathagata's inner realization. Where they are kept away from such views as eternalism and nihilism. Realism and negativism, and where they come face to face with the abode of happiness belonging to the present existence as well as to the Samapati. But. Mahamati. As the ignorant do not understand that the five dharmas. The three svabhavas, the eight vijnanas, and the twofold egolessness, together with the external objects which are regarded as existent and non-existent. All these are no more than what is seen of the mind itself. They are given to discrimination, but it is otherwise with the wise. Said Mahamati. How is it that the ignorant are given up to discrimination and the wise are not? Said the Blessed One. Mahamati, the ignorant cling to names, ideas, and signs. Their minds move along these channels. As thus they move along, they feed on multiplicities of objects, and fall into the notion of an ego soul and what belongs to it, and cling to salutary appearances. As thus they cling, there is a reversion to ignorance, and they become tainted, karma born of greed, anger, and folly is accumulated. As karma is accumulated again and again, their minds become swathed in the cocoon of discrimination as the silkworm. And, transmigrating in the ocean of birth and death, they are unable, like the water drawing wheel, to move forward. And because of folly, they do not understand that all things are like Maya, a mirage, the moon in water, and have no self-substance to be imagined as an ego soul and its belongings. That things rise from their false discrimination. That they are devoid of qualified and qualifying. And have nothing to do with the course of birth, abiding, and destruction. That they are born of the discrimination of what is only seen of the mind itself and assert one that they are born of Isvara, time, atoms, or a supreme spirit, for they follow names and appearances. Mahamati, the ignorant move along with appearances. Further, Mahamati, by appearance is meant that which reveals itself to the visual sense, and is perceived as form, and in like manner that which, appearing to the sense of hearing, smelling, tasting, the body, and the manovijanana, is perceived as sound, odor, taste, tactility, and idea. All this I call appearance. Further, Mahamati, by discrimination is meant that by which names are declared, and there is thus the indicating of various appearances. Saying that this is such and no other, for instance, saying that this is an elephant, a horse, a wheel, a pedestrian, a woman, or a man, each idea thus discriminated is so determined. Further, Mahamati, by right knowledge is meant this. When names and appearances are seen as unobtainable owing to their mutual conditioning, there is no more rising of the Vijnanas, for nothing comes to annihilation, nothing abides everlastingly. And when there is thus no falling back into the stage of the philosophers, Sravakas and Pratyekabuddhas, it is said that there is right knowledge. Further, Mahamati, by reason of this right knowledge, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva does not regard name as reality and appearance as non-reality. When erroneous views based on the dualistic notion of assertion and negation are gotten rid of, and when the Vijnanas cease to rise as regards the objective world of names and appearances, this I call suchness. Mahamati, a bodhisattva mahasattva who is established on suchness attains the state of imagelessness and thereby attains the bodhisattva stage of joy. When the bodhisattva attains the stage of joy, he is kept away from all the evil courses belonging to the philosophers and enters upon the path of superworldly truths. When all the conditions of truth are brought to consummation, he discerns that the course of all things starts with the notion of maya, etc. And after the attainment of the noble truth of self-realization, he earnestly desires to put a stop to speculative theorization. And going up in succession through the stages of bodhisattvahood he finally reaches the stage of dharma cloud. After being at the stage of dharma cloud, he reaches as far as the stage of tathagatahood where the flowers of the samadhis, powers, self-control, and psychic faculties are in bloom. After reaching here, in order to bring all beings to maturity, he shines like the moon in water, 
with varieties of rays of transformation. Perfectly fulfilling one the ten inexhaustible vows, he preaches the Dharma to all beings according to their various understandings. As the Bodhisattva Mahasattvas, Mahamati, have entered into suchness, they attain the body which is free from the will and thought constructions. Point two. Again, Mahamati said. Are the three Svabhavas to be regarded as included in the five dharmas, or as having their own characteristics complete in themselves? The Blessed One said. The three Svabhavas, the eight Vijnanas, and the twofold egolessness. They are all included in the five dharmas. Of these, name and appearance are known as the Parikalpata false imagination. Then, Mahamati, discrimination which rises depending upon them, is the notion of an ego soul and what belongs to it. The notion and the discrimination are of simultaneous occurrence, like the rising of the sun and its rays. Mahamati, the discrimination thus supporting the notion of self-nature which subsists in the multiplicities of objects, is called the paratantra dependence on another. Right knowledge and suchness, Mahamati, are indestructible, and thus they are known as Paranishpana perfect knowledge. Further, Mahamati, by adhering to what is seen of the mind itself there is an eightfold discrimination. This comes from imagining unreal individual appearances as real. When the twofold clinging to an ego soul and what belongs to it is stopped, there is the birth of the twofold egolessness. Mahamati. In these five dharmas are included all the Buddha truths and also the differentiation and succession of the Bodhisattva stages. And the entrance of the Sravakas, Pratyekabuddhas, Bodhisattvas, and Tathagatas into the state of self realization by means of their noble wisdom. 84. Further, Mahamati, of the five dharmas. Name, appearance, discrimination, right knowledge, and suchness. Appearance is that which is seen as having such characteristics as form, shape, distinctive features, images, colors, etc. This is appearance. Out of this appearance ideas are formed such as a jar, etc. By which one can say, this is such and such, and no other. This is name. When names are thus pronounced, appearances are determined one and there is discrimination, saying this is mind and this is what belongs to it. That these names and appearances are after all unobtainable because when intellection is put away the aspect of mutuality in which all things are determined ceases to be perceived and imagined. This is called the suchness of things. And this suchness may be characterized as truth, reality, exact knowledge, limit, source, self-substance, the unattainable. This has been realized by myself and the Tathagatas, truthfully pointed out, recognized, made public, and widely shown. When? In agreement with this. The truth is rightly understood as neither negative nor affirmative. Discrimination ceases to rise. And there is a state conformable to self-realization by means of noble wisdom, which is not the course of controversy pertaining to the philosophers, Sravakas, and Pratyekabuddhas. This is right knowledge. These are, Mahamati, the five dharmas, and in them are included the three svabhavas, the eight vijnanas, the twofold egolessness, and all the Buddha truths. In this, Mahamati, reflect well with your own wisdom and let others do the same and do not allow yourself to be led by another. So it is said. 5. The five dharmas, the svabhavas, the eight vijnanas, and the twofold egolessness. They are all embraced in the Mahayana. 6. Name, appearance, and discrimination correspond to the first two svabhavas, while right knowledge and suchness are the Paranishpana. 85. At that time again, Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva said this to the Blessed One. It is told by the Blessed One in the canonical text the Tathagatas of the past, present, and future are like the sands of the river Gunga. Blessed One, is this to be accepted literally? Or is there another distinct meaning?